Good morning. Welcome to the uh, February 11th, 2020 meeting for the Saline County Board of Commissioners. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick? Here. Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Vedrickson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Here. Commissioner White? Here. I ask that you please uh, stand and join me in a flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now move to the public forum portion of our meeting where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes, uh, pertaining to items that are not on today's agenda. Norman Annal, Salina, on the jail issue. The, there are three states that are releasing people out of prison. Why are we going to build a new jail? And I've heard people say, well, people shouldn't be arrested. And they're right. Because law enforcement is abusing their power. They will come into your house without a search warrant, without an arrest warrant. There was no issue done. And they arrested this person. It's an abuse of power. We're going to have to change our way of thinking how law enforcement works, how our government thinks we, we're going to just go out there and throw people in jail and lock them up. Because this issue of overpopulation isn't going to go away. I'm waiting for more information from Trainer. But everything I'm seeing, you're going to be wasting a lot of money. And it's not necessary. Abuse, misuse of money. You're going to have to change your way of thinking. Law enforcement has the attitude that I've got a gun, a fast car, and I can do what I want. And I got the quote here from a law enforcement man right in my billfold, or portfolio. Another law enforcement man says, it's your fault. No, it ain't. It's law enforcement's fault. Because I've seen too much of this abuse of power, excessive force. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the commission? Seeing then, I'll bring it back to the commission for regular business. Um, the consent agenda. Uh, is there any items that the commissioners wish to remove from today's consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, we will approve the uh, consent agenda. We'll move on to item number one. Proclamation declaring February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month with Courtney Train, Youth Advocate Mentor for DVAC. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, so as a Youth Advocate Mentor, I have the pleasure of working with several teens um, who've been either in abusive relationships or have used abusive tactics. So this is a really cool month for me to get to spread awareness. Whereas one in three adolescence in the United States is a victim of physical, emotional, or verbal abuse from a dating partner, a figure that far exceeds victimization rates for other types of violence affecting youth. And females between the ages of 16 to 24 are most vulnerable to intimate partner and sexual violence, experiencing abuse at a rate almost triple the national average. Uh, but I will remind you that teen boys are being affected by this as well. I'm working with two teen boys at the moment who have been victimized by this crime. Whereas high school students who experience physical violence in a dating relationship are more likely to use drugs and alcohol, are at a greater risk of suicide, and are much more likely to carry patterns of abuse into future relationships. Furthermore, young people victimized by a dating partner are more likely to engage in risky sexual behavior and unhealthy dieting behaviors and experience, and they may experience, um, and the experience may disrupt normal development of self-esteem and body image. And whereas nearly half of teens who experience dating violence report that incidents of abuse took place in a school building or on school grounds, and whereas only 33% of teens who are in an abusive relationship ever tell anyone about the abuse, and 81% of parents surveyed either believe teen dating violence is not an issue or they admit they just don't know if it's an issue. 
By providing young people, parents, and professionals with education about healthy relationships, warning signs of abuse, and relationship skills, and by changing attitudes that support violence, we recognize that teen dating violence can be prevented. Whereas DVAC needs all of Saline County to work toward ending teen dating violence by empowering young people to develop healthier relationships, assisting victims in accessing the information and supportive services that they need, instituting effective intervention and prevention policies in schools, and engaging in discussion with family members and peers to promote awareness and prevention of the quiet epidemic of teen dating violence. Now, therefore, DVAC invites the Sling County Board of Commissioners to designate February 2020 as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month and to urge citizens to recognize and assist all those who serve the rights and needs of victims of teen dating violence. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, do you have any other activities planned uh, this week or this month for your... Yeah, so today's actually wear orange for awareness, so that's why I'm in this like orange potato sack bag. Uh, that's all I could find. <laughs> and then, um, so if you if you got anything orange, take a picture and tag DVAC, you know, whatever. Hashtag, I'm not even cool and I'm young. And then this Friday, I'm doing a workshop for both parents, community members, professionals, anyone, uh, youth, on teen dating violence at the library from 12 to 1 over the lunch hour and kids are out of school for conferences so there's no excuse if you got a kid get them there and we'll do some fun activities to talk about these issues um, and then just check our social media and I've got our newsletter if any of you would like a copy of that to see some other activities okay are there uh, any comments from commissioners no. okay. I would uh, take a motion then Mr. Chairman, I move we declare February 2020 as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Second the motion. It's been moved and second that we uh, uh, declare February 2020 as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And uh, further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. I do have a signed proclamation for you, and you can bring your... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thank you. We will move to uh, item number two. RFA 124-20, Affordable Language Services Agreement with Jason Tiller, Health Department Director. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, gentlemen. Before you, you have a service agreement with Affordable Language Services. We are looking to enter into this agreement with them to provide uh, translation services to our clients in multiple language other than Spanish as well as to provide um, uh, services for hearing impaired such as American Sign Language. Um, we do have a Spanish interpreter on staff but quite often we have had uh, others that clients that come in that have other languages uh, especially with English not being their first language and we have tried to use family members um, etc to try and facilitate that translation but this provides a medically competent, competent and HIPAA compliant uh, translation um, there's a hundred dollar setup fee and there is a per minute charge we did look at a couple other services or another service um, this one does not have an annual fee like the other one did it still provides essentially the same service. They are also or, or, uh, certified, excuse me, in both English and the language that they are translating uh, into. So alternatives, of course, are to sign the agreement. Um, the chairman would do not sign it or send me back for additional information. And I'm asking for the chair to please sign this agreement so that we can enter into um, service with affordable language services. As far as the budget's concerned, with the $100 setup fee, that can come from our administrative fees and dues budget line. And then uh, those individual fees um, at the time of service can come from the individual sub-department budgets. So in other words, you really don't anticipate much of a budget impact no, overall sir. from no, this sir. action. Are there questions uh, or comments from commissioners? Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back. Do you have a question? Okay, I, I just, quick question here after reading this, and it's like, is this something here that the, the county wide could utilize also, or do we even have the need anywhere else in any of the departments, uh, like in the register deeds or any of this, that, that would benefit this to county have this? Eventually, I think so. It's not something that Phil and I have discussed yet. Okay. I wanted to get this moving, and then we can uh, add to it okay. if we, as we need to. Okay, thank you. Are there hours 
of operation? No, they're 24 seven. That they have translators available. And I think it's up to, um, I don't know, it's close to, I believe, over 100 different languages they can provide translation in, so. Further comments? Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the Commission for action. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve by signature the Affordable Language Services Agreement as requested by staff. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 124-20 Affordable Language Services Agreement. Any further discussion? All of those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to uh, item number three. RFA 125-20, tractor trailer haul truck with Darren Fischel, Road and Bridge Administrator. Good morning, Darren. Good morning, Commissioners. This is an RFA for the purchase of one new 2020 Kenworth T880 day cab heavy haul semi-tractor from MHC Kenworth, Salina, Kansas, for the amount of $1,980. The purchase would be through Sourcewell. Sourcewell is, is authorized to establish competitively awarded cooperative purchasing contracts on the behalf of itself and its member agencies. Sourcewell follows the competitive contract law process to solicit, evaluate, and award cooperative purchasing contracts for goods and services. Sourcewell members are able to utilize cooperative purchasing contracts through similar joint powers, intergovernmental mental cooperation or cooperative purchasing laws in their respective jurisdiction. This would be in accordance with Saline County, County Policy 40-32, exemptions to competitive purchase. Section 2 states, governmental contracts. Competitive bid proposal may be waived when purchases are made in the cooperation with other city, county, state, or federal agencies, and it is deemed in the best interest of the county to purchase supplies, services and equipment from contracts and agreements of other governmental agencies. Such purchases from zero to 25,000 may be approved by the county administrator. Purchase in excess of $25,000 shall be approved by the Board of County Commissioners. The, the alternatives um, would be one, A, authorize the purchase, B, reject the purchase, C, reject purchase and direct staff to send out for bids, D, direct staff to continue searching for a used truck. Staff recommends purchasing the Kenworth semi-tractor from MHC Kenworth, Salina, Kansas. We had $90,000 budgeted for the purchase of a used semi-tractor. In the search for a low mile, low hour pulling unit, we discovered that these units are in limited ready supply and bring a premium just short of new price. The type of truck we need, which is a high horsepower with the correct gear ratios and rear end combinations, are not readily available on the used market. A local truck supplier has a new one available for immediate service. To bid a truck and order the unit and take delivery usually puts us in the eight to the nine month time frame. This truck will not replace the current unit. We plan to um, contact Salina Votech and schedule the vehicle to have their diesel mechanics class rebuild the motor. And um, It is a 2004 Mac with 516,000 miles and it's due for an engine overhaul. It was purchased used in 2011. The budget impact is uh, the Road and Bridge Department had $90,000 allotted for the purchase of this vehicle in the 2020 budget. We would like to use that $90,000 plus $30,980 from the Road and Bridge Special Equipment Fund. The Special Equipment Fund has a balance of $1,945,727. Darren, tell me the difference between source well and uh, what is it, the, the state? Uh, purchasing unit that we have used before. Yes, it is. It is the same source. Source well contracts or contacts um, equipment manufacturers, and they deal for government pricing on equipment. So they say, okay, give us your best price for a governmental entity, and then that allows other governmental entities to tag on to their their pricing. Uh, what was the can was the state source? Uh, looked at or the state was was okay. looked at um, they don't typically buy these kind of, of tractors so they did not have a contract um, the source well pricing um, was a savings of thirteen thousand dollars off the price of the truck 
Um, the, the, the price of the truck was $133,000 and then going through source well brought the price down to $120,000. Very good. Are there questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, a couple questions, Darren. Uh, on your uh, equipment fund, are you, uh, did you expend 100% uh, of 2019's budget there, or will there be some rollover? In there would be some rollover in the 2019, yes. And I couldn't tell you the exact dollar amount right now. Okay, and second question, what, what's your comfort level for a, a balance on that special equipment fund? One million dollars is what we consider prudent reserve. Um, that is uh, taking into consideration any catastrophic um, event, uh, be it flood, hurricane, not, not likely here, but a tornado that we, the county would need to replace equipment. And we did a study with the insurance company about two years ago to come up with that dollar amount. So basically, source wells just the middleman because I'm not familiar with them. And how do they get compensated? You know, I don't know that source well does get compensated. I see. Honestly, they um, the from what I understand, it's a governmental agency in Minnesota that that does this for uh, nationwide. And so I don't know where source wells money comes from. Honestly, I don't. I would guess it'd be a commission-based something somewhere along the line that uh, I'm going to assume that that through the dealership or for, through their their uh, their partners in the industries that they would get uh, some kind of payment. My guess it's no different than uh, a salesman working on a car lot who who sells a car to someone and uh, he gets paid a commission. Um, somewhere in there is somewhere in there's, that, there's in that be paper a trail is where what happens there. Further comments from commissioners. Darren, I, I just want to add is that in this, when I looked at what you had done in the past is bought a used piece of equipment, and so I thought, okay, I'm just going to go online and check and see, and uh, I think you're very prudent on doing this. Then I called another gentleman I know that buys trucks, and he goes, oh, yeah, and I asked him about the quality of this Kenworth, and he goes, oh, that'd be a good truck, and he says that'd be about a $160,000 truck, and I said, okay, so 120 is a great deal, and he goes, oh, yeah, that's a good deal, so anyway, I, I commend you on getting that type of a truck for that price, he says, so I thank you. Further comments? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the Commission for Action. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the purchase of one new 2020 Kenworth T880 day cab heavy haul semi-tractor from MHC Kenworth for the amount of $120,980 as requested by staff. Second. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 125-20 tractor trailer haul truck. Further comments? All those in favor of the motion on the table, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number four. Pre-trial stats update with Andrew Pellant, pre-trial coordinator with Committee Corrections. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. All right, so this is the stats updates for the month of January for the pre-trial program. There were 15 placements on pre-trial services in the month of January. I know that number is a little down. Um, it kind of follows the yearly trends we see with the time of the year. Um, you get in some of the winter months. Um, the arrests were down. I have a chance to look at the bookend sheets every day. Uh, new arrests were down, so naturally you're going to see some of those numbers drop. Now it didn't affect our jail day save. That still kind of that still went up a little bit, but that's just some of the trends we see every year with regards to the time of the year. As of January 31st, 97 clients are actively being supervised, 22 are in custody, 146 have had their charges dismissed or have been sentenced, and 80 have had their pretrial bond revoked. Of the 80 who have had their pretrial bond revoked, 9 were because of alleged new charges, and 71 were due to fail failure to appears. The 345 placements on pretrial supervision through January 31st have impacted the Slane County Jail by 22,624 days. December accounted for 3,580 of those days. Um, not really an update on the new IT system. We do have Bob Stevenson coming back in a couple weeks. 
uh, to to meet with a few of us at the office. Uh, it's not just pretrial; they're trying to do a new system for it. It's also drug court and other entities. So it's trying to put the pieces in place that each program needs. Um, we are getting closer on that, and so he's coming back, and we're going to meet with him, and hopefully we get one step further into the the text to talk and the notifications of court dates and times that are automatic to clients, so we can try to decrease those failure to appears, which you see is still the majority of our our ones who aren't successful in the program. Uh, program tool validation update. Uh, ISO Garcia and I will be working on completing and implementing a scoring guide when completing pretrial risk assessments to ensure accuracy when scoring defendants on potential uh, risk factors. Uh, we are also having a meeting on March 10th. Uh, we kind of piggybacked off drug court. They were having a lot of drug court programs from around the state come and meet at community corrections and go over their programs, their policies, what's working, what's not working. So I decided with pretrial we're going to piggyback off that. I emailed a lot of um, agencies across the state to gauge their interest and I've heard back from a couple of them but we're going to try and get a similar statewide pretrial meeting um, again to go over what's working what's not working for programs what trends are they seeing um, and so we can kind of put our heads together and um, see how, what's the best way to move forward using best practices with the pretrial program and that's what I have okay I'll say it again it amazes me uh, that 80 people have their pretrial bond revoked in 71 purely due to their failure to appear. Yes. All they have to do is show up for a court appearance and they're not going to be in jail. Though they don't show up so they get arrested. Uh, on your, on your uh, impact days for the Sling County Jail, and uh, th it, does that include, how, how does that impacted by those people that have had their, uh, that are out on pretrial and then get it revoked? It, it impacts it when they're out on pretrial and actively being supervised, those days count as jail days saved. Now, once they're revoked um, and we close them out, then that no longer affects those days. So it's only jail days saved if they're actively out in the program being supervised. So uh, if I'm reading this and I'll be loose with it, 97 clients are actively being supervised. So those 97 people are the ones that are affected, uh, that have an effect on that 22,000 days. Um, Correct, and that and that's uh, the 97 clients were as of July or as of January 31st, and we had a lot of successful releases in January. So we, even though it ended the month on 97, you know, earlier in the month it was 113. So I mean, it changes daily. Our, our um, actively supervised clients change daily just with regards to what's going on in court. Do we have any new clients or any sentenced? Do we, are there any that are in jail and active and then are able to make their bond and now actively being supervised by our program? So those numbers, you know, those change daily. So I, I usually just use the number at the end of the month. And so yes, those 97 did and in addition to several others who were sentenced throughout the month. So those 22,000 days are January only? No, the January... Oh, and I forget, I think the one says December, so I should have changed that to January. On number four on my talking points. Yes. Um, so January would have counted for 3,580 of the days. The 22,624 are the total days since, since the inception of the program. And that it's how many months now? It's, we're coming on a year in April. April 1st or first week of April. So about nine started. months. Correct. Okay, further comments from uh, commissioners? If not, uh, thank you for the update. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. We'll move to item number five. RFA 123-20, Hazardous Materials Emergency, Emergency Preparedness Grant with Michelle Barkley, Emergency Management Director. Good morning, Michelle. Morning. Good. Good. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Sling County Local Emergency Planning Committee. They are seeking approval to apply for the 2020 Hazardous Material Emergency Preparedness Grant. Can you hear me now? Try it again. Hello? Yes? No? Okay. Sorry. I'm here on behalf of Saline County's um, Local Emergency Planning Committee. They're seeking um, approval to apply for the 2020 Hazardous Material um, Preparedness Grant. Through this grant, they are going to apply for a drug IQ class. Um, this would um, entail uh, about 90 personnel going through this training. The personnel going through this training would be of the Drug Task Force and the Regional Hazardous Material um, Task Force that we house here in Salina. 
Um, the other course would be sending six technicians from the hazardous material team to Baltimore to attend a conference with state-of-the-art training and new equipment being released. Um, their total for both trainings is uh, $36,637.50. However, it would be a soft match. This grant is an 80-20, so um, they're looking at only having to pay $7,237.50, and the soft match will be used through um, personnel salaries that are attending the training. So if I'm hearing that correctly on, on the soft match that they the, the personnel have to provide that money? It's through their salaries. So what we pay as a city and county for these employees day to day, them attending the training is what will cover this match. All right. Now, I'll clear on that now then. Are there uh, comments from commissioners? Is there any uh, public comment? On the, on the soft match, uh, that's the $9,700. That's 7237 uh, I'm, I'm looking at oh, it's, it's in the <clears throat> okay I was just looking at your your breakout on the, on the sheets and it showed salary for firefighters and it had 9792 correct we combined both the trainings um, and that's overall what you pay for okay. them both of them are using a soft match to meet their 80 20. Correct, and they only care about seeing what the 20% of the training is. Okay, and, even and if is it's there more. any backfill charges to that? No. Okay. Any other comments? Public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the Commission for Action. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept by signature the 2020 Hazardous Material Emergency Preparedness Grant for training as requested by staff. Second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 123-20 Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Grant. Further comments? Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion does carry. Uh, item number six. County Administrator's update. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Uh, three items this morning to update you on. I reported last week that uh, Hannah and I would be attending the KACM Winter Conference down at Wichita. Uh, we got quite a bit of good information at that conference. The kickoff speaker was the character coach from the uh, WSU men's basketball team. And he had a lot of interesting ideas about team building that I think we can apply here in the county, as well as some thoughts that uh, I think we might apply on the jail project. We got a couple of uh, ideas for the employee newsletter. We got uh, notified of some new training that's being offered on customer service skills, which we plan to evaluate for cost effectiveness. Um, a lot more on participation and uh, things that we can apply to the jail town halls, making sure we have additional opportunities. And then we also got a great idea for employee in-service day that we've already got Maryland working on. So I think it was um, time well spent. Upcoming events, uh, the Kansas Association of Counties is again offering their webinar Wednesdays this year, and the first of those will be uh, tomorrow morning at 10. That will be health in all policies. The 911 advisory group is having a meeting on Thursday, and we'll be talking about the uh, proposals for radio project and of course I want to remind commissioners but more importantly members of the public that we have our next jail town hall coming up on February 27th 6 p.m. at K-State Polytechnic and uh, commissioners you should have received from me the fact that we have been invited to a regional county commissioners meeting in Clay Center on March 24th so let me know if you need me to RSVP for that last but not least I will remind folks that um, next Monday is President's Day and the City County building will be closed that day that's all I have for this morning all right thank you questions from commissioners all right. Thank you very much, Philip. Uh, are there any uh, announcements from commissioners? Nope. 
Seeing none, hearing none, I will uh, ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and second that we adjourn today's meeting. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. We are adjourned. We will have a study session following in room 107B uh, after a very short pause.